We're going to be hearing Dalton Connect's name for a while now, and it's not necessarily because he's the flashiest, most electric player out there, because the real beauty of his game is in the simplicity of it. The quick decisions, the nuances in his shooting, his off-ball movement, his ability to get out and transition. All stuff that we can learn from. So I'll break it all down in this video for y'all. And I think you'll be impressed with what you see in his game. So first off, let's dive into his shooting a bit. And one of the first things I notice is how rhythmic his footwork is. Whether it's using this little gallop to find some flow and rhythm into a shot. Using these bigger hops to time everything up and quickly pop up from there. Using low hops like this as the ball is in the air so that on the catch, he's already in rhythm and straight up into the air. Maybe adjusting the timing of his dribble to align with his footwork better. Or even just having a general feel for timing up the catch with his footwork. This is something that can be worked on, but also comes down to finding these little tools to create rhythm efficiently in a game. He also has a great mix between being able to get on balance and also being able to shoot off balance and dynamically when needed. So sometimes he'll be moving at a high speed and really put force into the ground with the hop to stop himself and jump more straight up and down. On the flip side, other times, he'll allow that momentum to keep going and fade a bit. And if you're able to do both of these, making tough shots more on balance and easier, and also dealing with imperfection and off-balance shots when you can't do that, your chance of being a high-level shooter dramatically increases. Also, notice how patient he is on contested shots. Pulling a hezzy jumper over Bol Bol with this level of calmness is crazy. And then again to tie the game. And on all of these, he knows he has a contest, but he's not worried about it. And that's the level of focus that really scales up to tough shot makers at the NBA level. And part of this is his ability to elevate and shoot with a really high release, which allows him to not rush, shoot comfortably, and get off a pretty high quality shot, even with a tough close contest. Something to work on for any player, really. Also notice how he makes a ton of jumpers coming directly down the court, either off the catch or off the dribble in really the first few seconds of the shot clock. Part of why these are difficult for many players is because they're not yet in the mindset of hunting and making a shot. But he gets into that offensive mindset as soon as the ball changes possession, in this way, since he's making these consistently, he's able to use this as a threat to go to the rim in early offense because defenders know that he's willing to come down and just pull it off rip. I'm also impressed with how he's able to shoot off of bad passes, which speaks to his adaptability, but also his readiness to shoot. Russell. He's flying around the court with his hands out and ready, which seems so basic and cliche, but also allows him to manage bad passes easier and make him more of a ready target in the minds of his teammates. I'd much rather pass to this than somebody who doesn't look prepared. And while we're at it, let's dissect a bit how he gets open on the perimeter. First off, he sets super intentful screens, which is such an underrated and almost guaranteed way to get open. As soon as you get two defenders worried about your teammate, it's easy to now get open from there. And while most players set BS screens, Connect is super deliberate with it. Also, as he's running off of screens, He's great at taking detours, or in other words, navigating these screens in creative ways to find space based on how defenders cheat and overplay certain options, which makes it super tough on defenses. Trailed at the half. Only win here at home was against Abilene Christian. He's also incredible at realizing when he has space and taking advantage of that. So in a situation like this where his defender's in a help position and giving him space, it's much easier to capitalize on off-ball screens because now, they're behind, they have to cheat or go under the screen most times, and it's over. Four for six for three. His great preseason continues. Connect. And even when it's in close quarters and he's coming off these little pin downs, he's great at creating this space with pace and contact to get this defender behind. And around this area, he's money. At the NBA level, we all know that longer middies aren't really the most popular which works well for him considering he only scored 10 points all college season long on longer mid-range jumpers. But these short jumpers are different. And most great scorers have these in their toolbox. So with Connect, you'll notice he's able to shoot these facing away with different shot paths. And when fading and moving a ton. And the beautiful thing about shorter jumpers is that since they're so close and there's more room for error, you're able to adjust your shot much more than on a three ball or a longer shot which makes it a great alternative to not have to attack the rim hard every time. 
Now let's talk attacking the bucket and finishing. So he primarily uses closeout attacks, ball screens, and off ball screens to get to the bucket. There's really no secret here. He just has a great knack for finding little advantages and getting strong straight line drives downhill. Like using these inside hand toss outs on the catch to take a nice angle on a trailing defender into space and more efficiently turn this corner. Or navigating the floor to create distance from his defender, causing a nice closeout, and then catching it with perfect timing and readiness to take advantage of it explosively. Now, once he gets downhill, he uses his athleticism in really strategic ways. First off, being this gallop two foot finish where he goes outside inside to get some power going, momentum towards the rim, and stability considering it's off of two feet. This also smoothly turns him or rotates him a bit so he can go shoulder to chest, which he's one of the best that I've seen in a while. And being able to go up, clash with this vertical defender, hang and finish definitely takes hang time and focus, but makes it super tough for shot blockers since they can't really do too much about it. The feeling is they will be 72 65. Connect at good position. And then sometimes he goes with what I call a one and a half foot finish, where he technically jumps off of one foot, but he takes these last two slower, longer strides, and that first foot is on the ground until really the last second. He's up on him right now. Late shot clock offense again. Wright stays with him. Connect on the drive. And then with the higher speed, he often jumps from pretty far out, which can throw off the timing of defender's jumps and either puts him in the air before they're ready or allows him to jump past this defender who's going more straight up and down. Connect. Boy, that's my world. Connect. Back and lastly on this topic, let's talk about how he attacks and maneuvers ball screens. First off, he plays at a pretty tall height, which is something important to know because most of the coaching you hear speaks to always being lower. And while being low absolutely is valuable, for taller players navigating a ball screen situation, for example, especially doing so with more patience, an upright posture may be a good way to go. So now he's able to quickly pop up into jumpers, see over the defense, and catch defenders sleeping while still being very explosive off the bounce. He also has a great feeling for this strong side gap. In other words, reading how much space he has here and if this defender is in that gap or not. If he does have space, this driving lane is much more reasonable and he's able to take bigs one-on-one -on -one since there's not a tight gap here. But if it's not open, he's looking to adjust and angle a bit back towards the middle. And as he does go back middle, he loves to use this little hop to create some rhythm and contact with his trailing defender. Now in terms of setting the screens up, once again, you'll see this kind of rhythmic gallop to set it up, which allows him a window to read the play and then a comfortable footwork to go either way out of it, but especially being able to reject that screen more efficiently if his primary defender is jumping over that screen, like they often will. And the great thing about rejecting screens is that once you get an advantage, you've got a lot of open court ahead of you. Now, lastly, let's talk about transition, where he actually scored the majority of his points in college at a really high efficiency. At the most basic level, he just knows when his opportunities are and capitalizes on them. On turnovers and long misses, and even on made shots, he has a feel for when the other team is tired, maybe getting comfortable, and he gets out from there. And you'll see his first step off the blocks going the opposite direction is elite. He fully commits from step one, and that's what gets him this advantage most times. Where De Leon's got to improve, Griffin takes it, he ripped it right away. He's got connect ahead of the field. From there, his ability to map the floor and find running lanes is fun to watch. These lanes aren't all about certain spots on the floor, but also about where defenders are. So here, for example, he finds a lane right in front of this defender, but far enough to where this guy can't play between two. Here he gets wide and runs it a bit slower of a speed to not get too ahead of the play. And then here he gets across the court to take this lane in between these two defenders. And even with the ball, Sometimes he'll use this cross-court angle to attract multiple defenders, which opens up teammates, but also causes confusion in terms of who's actually supposed to stop him. And what's also really cool to see is how he times up his strides with the ball by using either these little stutter steps or long strides so that he's jumping exactly how he wants to from where he wants to. And then lastly, worst case, if he gets all the way down the court in transition but still doesn't get anything, he stays in it mentally and often ends up getting easy buckets in the secondary break because he beat them down the court and they forgot about it. Meshack, pedal to the metal. Nice poise. Ziegler goes cross court. Connect. So hopefully you guys take something from this video. Again, the simplicity of his game is something to really study 
and try to mimic in your own game at times. Getting out in transition, making simple decisions consistently on both ball screens and off ball screens is something we can all get better at and capitalize on. As always, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Stay tuned for next time.